like to call this Saline City Council meeting to order. If you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, members present this evening are myself, Mayor Morrow, Council Members Gearbaugh, CO, Mitchell, Tahar, and Dillon. From city staff, we have City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, Wastewater Treatment Superintendent Skull, Police Chief Rennick, um, Superintendent Engineer Rubel is absent this evening, along with Parks and Rec Director Scruggs. Um, DPW Director Fordyce is here, along with Deputy Treasurer McDonough. In front of you, you have a rendering of the Leather Bucket Alley Stairway, which will be referenced um, during the... Um, new business section of tonight's agenda. You also have a memo from the clerk's office dated June the 15th, um, 2017, uh, which pertains to the special land use. And finally, you have a copy of the revised um, performance evaluation for our city manager, which will be uh, referenced and discussed briefly under, under the discussion portion of our agenda this evening. Uh, with that, is there a motion to approve the agenda as submitted unless there are amendments? One amendment for discussion. I'd like to add on the um, liquor license memos that we received. Because we talked about it at the last meeting, if we could chat about them. Mm, all right, Mr. Gearbaugh, why don't we bring that up under reports and other announcements? But sure. we'll add liquor license as the liquor licenses, excuse me, as the first item. Are there um, further additions to tonight's agenda? And the chair would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Moved by Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. All those in favor of approving the agenda as amended signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. And the motion carries unanimously. Is there a motion now to excuse the absence of Councilwoman uh, McClellan? So moved. Uh, we'll let Tahar be the mover and uh, Council Member Gearbaugh be the second. Uh, all those in favor of excusing our colleagues' absence signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. And I actually failed to acknowledge you should also have a printed copy of my State of the City address in front of you as well. And we will uh, now transition to that. Good evening. City Council, City Manager Campbell, Clerk Royal, distinguished guests, and my fellow citizens. As is my custom, I want to begin tonight by expressing my appreciation to the residents of Saline for, 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 uh, excuse me, for providing me the privilege of serving as your mayor. As I've stated numerous times in the past, Saline is a very special place, a community with a rich history and an extremely bright future. But of course, that future can only be secured with hard work and dedication and a clear vision. In the next six months and in the coming years, City Council and staff will continue to focus on the issues that matter most to our residents. Paramount among these is business attraction and retention, and creating an environment where our local economy can grow and mature. As I expressed in January, I feel it's imperative that as mayor, I'm not only an ambassador for the community, but also someone who works aggressively to recruit and work, uh, who aggressively recruits and works with businesses to invest in Saline. Excuse me. In the last six months, with city's assistance, the community inaugurated our first movie theater in many decades, with the opening of Imagine Theater Saline. We are excited about additional economic activity in our city's eastern border. There is renewed interest in the vacant storefronts in the Salt Common Shopping Center, and progress continues on the development of a standalone Ace Hardware, Boutique Hotel, and Zippy's Car Wash, to name a few. The city has either encouraged or supported the, de the development of other small businesses, including Matty J's Bakery and Restaurant, McPherson Local, the Celine Cheese Shop, Sweet Lelaney's Desserts, and Smokehouse 52 Barbecue. Most of these small businesses, and most of those small businesses that I just named, are, wi are within what is commonly accepted as the borders of our downtown. Needless to say, our historic and aesthetically pleasing downtown is one of the things that makes Celine unique and these new additions will enhance the quality of our downtown. However, that is not to say that there aren't challenges that exist within the core of our downtown. Historically, one of those challenges has been parking. The dedicated members of Saline Main Street will conduct a parking analysis, and in August, City Council will meet with Saline Main Street, local business owners, and property owners to discuss strategies and approaches to resolving this potentially growing issue. 
I would also remind my fellow citizens to remember that our downtown will host a number of signature events this summer and fall that are enjoyable and fun for people of all ages. These include summer, uh, the Summer Music Series, Summerfest, Oktoberfest, not to mention the Saturday Farmer's Market. While we're excited about the increased commercial activity in our, on our eastern border and on our downtown, it must continue to be a goal to increase the economic vitality of our west side. In that vein, in the coming months, I will renew efforts to engage businesses and property owners in that area, including organizing ongoing discussions. Momentum is developing with the community retention and recruitment team, uniting the City of Saline, Saline Main Street, the Saline Area Chamber of Commerce, and Saline Area Schools to find ways to attract new investment to our area. Of course, another component of economic growth is the improvement in residential housing. And I'm proud to say that the City of Saline and the Planning Commission specifically have been very thoughtful and strategic about the proposals that have been presented for consideration. Progress continues on a number of appealing and attractive developments, including Cypress Ridge, Curtis Bluffs, Risden Heights, Maple Oaks, Linden Square Phase 2, Fairdean, Cascade Point, and Maple Cove. As I mentioned this past winter, the City of Saline supports smart, strategic growth. We know there are many developers who are interested in annexing parcels into the city limits. Later this month, I will chair a work meeting with city staff and legal counsel so that everyone on city council is informed about the progress and the potential, potential rewards and ramifications of annexation. Now, it is a great relief to no longer have to deal with US-12 being under construction. While there are some minor components still outstanding, I think it's clear to say that the Michigan Avenue makeover was extremely successful. This construction season, the city will complete projects on Austin Road and Old Creek Drive, and we will continue our efforts to improve the city's sidewalk inventory. As it relates to infrastructure funding, I hosted two coffee hours this past spring to inform the public of what our needs are and to solicit residents' opinions on how best to move forward. Because road funding and maintenance are so timely and important, we have included an infrastructure questionnaire in our upcoming FYI newsletter and have information available online and at the front counter of City Hall. We welcome our residents' thoughts and opinions on this quality of life issue. While I was absent, City Council had a thoughtful and robust discussion at its most recent meeting on the wastewater treatment plant, specifically ongoing efforts to mitigate odor issues. As has been previously discussed, Webster Environmental Associates will complete its second round of testing to identify the deficiencies that exist. Subsequent to that report, the City of Saline will move expeditiously to resolve these issues. In fact, we have already begun to secure efforts to secure and identify funding for additional improvements. Let me be emphatic. I sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and for the discomfort. The frequency and severity of odors of late is not acceptable. And in the interim, if residents or business owners have questions or concerns, or if they experience a particularly obnoxious odor, they are encouraged to call the wastewater treatment plant at 734-944-2003 or until mid-July, Tetratech at 734-320-5336. In these challenging times, or perhaps, or, be, or perhaps because we live in challenging times, it's ever more prudent to be wise stewards of public resources. The city of Saline has a strong track record of protecting precious public dollars. As many are already aware, the City of Saline and Saline City Council recently adopted its budget for fiscal year 2017-2018, which strategically invests in areas critical to our community's well-being. As I've stated in the past, our budget is a reflection of our values and our priorities as a community. This year, we have spent considerable time scrutinizing and evaluating renovations to our recreation complex. There were certainly mistakes made during the design and installation, implementation, excuse me, of the roof at our rec center. But the wise and appropriate thing to do was to acknowledge, that the, to acknowledge the facility as an invaluable community resource, while at the same time moving forward in a fiscally prudent, forward-looking manner. I believe we're on track to doing just that. I strongly encourage all Saline community members to check out our recreation complex. There are a number of valuable programs and special amenities for people of all ages and physical abilities. The true benefit of the complex is that it can help us lead healthier, more fulfilling lives. Later this summer, we will also have a detailed and robust discussion about employee compensation, employee contracts, and severance pay. 
I'm eager to develop consensus on this important issue. Quite frankly, it's beyond debate that ensuring public safety is the most fundamental responsibility we have as a city. We are proud of the service that our police, firefighter, firefighters, and EMS professionals provide. And we will continue to strive to make sure they have the resources they need to do their jobs and that they are performing effectively and are meeting the needs of our community. In that vein, Councilmember CEO will be chairing the Police Advisory Board work group tasked with determining whether an advisory board would be beneficial to the City of Saline. We look forward to them completing their important work. We also continue to appreciate the efforts of the Saline Community Addiction Prevention Task Force. We are hopeful that this group can assist in fighting the scourge of addiction and substance abuse in our area. Finally, significant progress has been made on the development of a non-discrimination ordinance, something that City Council and the Code and Ordinance Review Task Force will be discussing in the very near future. I think every reasonable person can agree that every member of our community should feel safe and welcome and should be protected under the law. Because in the United States, we must work to do this for everyone. Speaking of the Code and Ordinance Review Task Force, the group will reconvene later this summer to discuss the non-discrimination policy, but also a property maintenance ordinance. The City of Saline, of course, will continue to engage and interact with the people we serve. We encourage residents and business owners to use our website as a tool, but also to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and to download the C-Click Fix apps, app to report problems or concerns. For those who own and operate a large or small business in the community, we will hold a large business summit on July the 14th and a small business forum later this fall. We look forward to better understanding the needs of our business community. I will be holding two upcoming coffee hours and all residents are welcome to attend. The first will be on August 12th beginning at 10 a.m. at Kerrigan Cafe. The second will be held on October 19th beginning promptly at 5.30 p.m. at the Saline Area Senior Center. Of course, the best way to understand the pulse of our community is to become engaged and to find an outlet for your passion and energies that might help your community. There are countless volunteer opportunities on city boards and commissions, but also with a number of community groups, organizations, and churches. In the coming months and years, there will be many additional opportunities to support the community, specifically through the work being done by the Community Foundation Work Group, which is evaluating other community foundations in the hope of developing the infrastructure for a Saline Community Foundation. I want to thank Council Members Kristen Mitchell and Heidi McClellan for their leadership on this group. Finally, I want to extend an invitation to all Saline community residents to attend our upcoming Celtic Festival on July 14th and 15th. This is a tremendous event with activities and amenities for people of all ages. Now, every successful community relies on civically minded individuals who are willing to serve causes greater than themselves. And that even includes those who seek elected leadership positions. Firstly, I want to thank Mayor Pro Tem Tahar, Linda Tahar, for her adv advice and counsel and her extraordinary commitment to the Saline community. I also want to acknowledge the efforts made by all my colleagues on City Council, Jack Seo, Janet Dillon, Dean Gearbaugh, Heidi McClellan, and Kristen Mitchell. Last, I'm reminded uh, by the sentiment that former Mayor Don Shelton once expressed. While the roles of council member and mayor are important, 90% of the work done by our city is done by our tremendous staff. For those, from those on the front lines to those who serve as department heads, we thank you for all you do to make Celine a wonderful place. And we welcome our newest employees, Steve Maciag as building inspector, Gary Sheska as code enforcement officer, and Miley uh, Weberline as assistant treasurer. In a time of increased cynicism and negativity, I'm reminded that the Bible tells us time and time again to be thankful. And indeed, we have much to be grateful for in the Saline area. Our strategic position is strong, our vision for the future is clear, and the character and commitment of our people is unwavering. As such, I continue to believe that our best days are ahead of us. Thank you, God bless you, and may God bless Saline. Okay, my friends, moving on on the agenda this evening, we have one presentation, and it is uh, regarding the 2017 Saline Celtic Festival, and we have three outstanding members of our Celtic Festival Executive Committee, uh, Jim Peters, Terry Murphy, and Jeff Ulrich. Um, gentlemen and ladies, or lady, would you like to come forward to the podium and uh, make a presentation? And I should note for the record, we're delighted to have you here this evening. Well, it... it 
if I may, I apologize for cutting you off, Terry. We also recognize Terry, who uh, happens to be our volunteer spotlight in the most recent <laughs> FYI newsletter. So you'll have to, you're a Pittsfield resident, so you're welcome to take that for your scrapbook or archives. But we appreciate your, uh, your tremendous leadership and dedication to the festival all these years. Jeff, my apologies. The floor is yours. Oh, thank you. My name is Jeff Ulrich. I'm the executive chairperson of the Sony Celtic Festival. And with me is Terry Murphy. She's one of seven members of the executive a committee that meets twice uh, twice a month to plan and, and ultimately operate the Celtic Festival. <clears throat> so what we wanted to do is share a little bit with um, how we're doing this year and talk about what's new this year as well. So we're doing great overall. Um, the festival is, is in a very strong position this year compared to relative to other years in the past. Um, our sponsorship has exceeded goal. Volunteer requests are up year over year, which means that people are seeking us out as a volunteer opportunity to do something to give back to the community. Um, so the, exec the executive committee consists of seven members. There are general chairs underneath that, which consists of about 20 to 21 additional people. And from that number of people that meet once or twice a month, <coughs> the festival operations planning flows out to almost 400 people. Um, so what's new this year, or I should say, what, uh, as far as this year goes, so again, sponsorships exceeded goal. Uh, facilities have been optimized this year to reduce cost. So we were able to, to uh, combine two large tents into one, and then um, we got additional sources for a couple of 20 by 30 uh, tents that we won't have to pay for this year. Um, social media is extremely busy this year. It's really rocking along. So we've got a lot of activity there compared to previous years, which is great. Um, that overall reduces our marketing costs and marketing efforts if we can get an increase in very strength in social media um, coverage. So what's new this year is the Mr. Pretty Likes uh, contest is coming back. So that's been something that has been missing for the past couple of years, and there's been some demand for that um, from attendees. Um, also new this year, we've got a group called the Noble Company and Order of St. Maurice Crusaders. So what that is is it's a living history reenactment group that sought us out this year. And we have a, a very large space dedicated to them to set up tents and, and they'll do the work. Um, the Templar Knights. Yeah. So. We'll see. It should be interesting. Um, also new this year, the workshops on Friday nights have been expanded. And uh, for the first time, we're dedicating our athletic field to, uh, to Jim Keezer. So there'll be a dedication of the Jim Keezer athletic field will occur this year as well. If, if any of you don't know who Jim Keezer is, he was one of the founding members of the festival. He passed away three, four years ago. Uh, Jim was there every year in the summer, driving around on golf carts, setting things up. Um, he was so dedicated and so passionate about the festival that we've decided to name our athletic field after him. His um, family will be there at the opening ceremony for that dedication, so we're kind of excited about that. That's nice. He was always been the holder of the golf cart keys, too. So if you wanted a golf cart, you had to go kind of explain your case to him. And if he thought you were worthy, you would get a key for a couple of hours or what have you. So he was a fun guy. Um, and then also this year, unfortunately, the Celtic Challenge um, has been canceled this year. So we plan to bring it back next year and partner with um, you know the folks that have run that in the past. Parts of the rack. Yeah, parts of the rack. So. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments for our guests? Ms. Tahar, please. Yes, thank you. Um, so uh, Jim Peters had reached out to the Environmental Commission about uh, recycling opportunities at the fest festival. Any update on that? I didn't have time to check with Jim ahead of time, so sorry for springing that on you. No, that's okay. And so as Jim makes his way up here, in the past we've, we've worked with uh, waste management to provide a number of recycling bins that we, we spread out throughout the park. That occurs um, Thursday or Friday, so if you're interested in folding cardboard bins and spreading them around the park, there'll be plenty of bins to fold. Um, Jim, update with We've had email communications, but we have to meet them to park in person, so that's coming. Okay, thank you. We anticipate them being there. Yes. Yes, yes. Our goal is to try to figure out how to work with them to optimize the recycling, because one common waste management made in the past is that when we do put recycling bins out there, people aren't always necessarily following you know, the, the guidelines of what should be recycled and what should be trashed. So that's really the goal is to try to enforce that that activity. Great. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? 
you have one? Mr. Capo, yeah, please. I was just going to suggest, and, and um, maybe uh, Mr. Peters is already in contact, but um, I believe Summerfest, the last couple of years, have you worked with the, uh, Washtenaw County. I'm not sure exactly which department, but to help, they actually have a couple of folks on site and helping people understand. I mean, sit, standing there right next to the uh, recycle bin saying, you know, that can be recycled, that can be recycled, that can be thrown mm -hmm. away. That, so, anyway, it might that be. That is definitely our goal for this year to increase that. Yeah. Additional questions, comments? Well, we're looking forward to another, uh, what, what is, is, uh, is this the 22nd? 22nd? I was, okay. 22nd uh, Celtic Festival. Uh, my colleagues on council, as well as a number of other electeds and dignitaries, did receive uh, an invitation to participate in the opening ceremonies. Um, so we would be delighted if you were able to attend um, and then partake of some of the amenities at the festival. Um, anything else that we, we should know? I'll tell you one thing that I forgot to ask Jeff to put on the, um, we, we had some youth, and I don't remember who it was on the council about a year ago, we, we talked about the tweeners, the 12 and 13 year olds, and how they're an audience that we're not hitting the mark on. And we had a, a 12 year old, a 12 or 13 year old boy reach out to us, and um, he and some of his friends are going to be, well, you'll see them, they're going to be wearing festival t shirts and a name badge that says Youth Focus Group. So this is the 12, 13 year old group, and what they're going to do is wander the festival and come back and report to us on what they think we can do to serve the 12 and 13 year old that it's an odd age group. They're, mostly they just hang around. They, so they're going to um, advise us. They're going to come back and report to us after the festival on things that they think that we could do to in, increase the enjoyment for that group. So our goal is to increase that, that population of customers to visit. Okay. Uh, tickets are for sale at City Hall? Not yet, they will be. Um, Thursday. Let's say Thursday. Thursday. Okay. We'll hold you. We'll, right we'll hold you to that. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Very good. Well, we'll pray for good weather. Um, We're assured of good weather this year. Excellent. Pub in the park on Friday with live music and food, and then the all of the amenities and offerings on Saturday. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Well, we appreciate your leadership. Appreciate your time this evening, and we will see you on the fourteenth and fifteenth. Thank, Thank you. Do you want this for your archives? I do. Welcome. Okay, moving on. Uh, we come to citizen comments on agenda items under the Open Meetings Act. Any citizen may come forward uh, at this time and make comment or question on an item that appears on this agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required to state his or her name and address for the record. And regarding uh, the mayor's uh, city, you didn't mention anything about sidewalks or what area we're working on sidewalks. And I know we need to sidewalks. We definitely had no need to talk about attention. And the other thing, as far as the uh, leather project alley or the stairway, it had been there years and years ago. I think it's great to be able to have downtown and, and that store going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Are there additional uh, public comments on agenda items? No, then we'll proceed to the consent agenda. The following consent agenda will normally be adopted without discussion. However, at the request of any citizen or council member, any item may be removed from the consent agenda for council discussion. Move as submitted. Moved by council member CEO to approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by councilwoman Mitchell. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as submitted signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. We move on to public hearing item 17-110. This is special land use for 207 and 209 Industrial Drive uh, del del uh, delirium. delirium, excuse me, fitness. Um, and actually, um, in Mr. Rubel's absence, who's taking the lead on this? You taking the lead on this, Mr. Fordyce, or is the city manager? I guess I will. You will? Okay. Just wanted to um, figure out uh, yep. who was going to address questions and concerns if there wasn't, if there were any from the dais. Um, the first motion will be a motion to open the public hearing at uh, 7.54 p.m., affording the public an opportunity to speak to this issue. So moved. Moved by Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. Discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor of opening the public hearing signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Eyes have it. The public hearing is now op open. Anyone who would like to speak to this issue is invited and welcome to come forward to the podium at this time.
Please. Hi, I'm here on behalf of Blair Jennings. I'm one of the owners. Um, I just kind of want to explain a little bit about what we're hoping to do. Um, we are a small group fitness studio. Um, we hold one hour long variable intensity interval training classes for groups of 12 or fewer. Um, and I understand there was a little bit of an issue possibly with um, the parking. And that was always up for debate. Um, so our main hours of operation are going to be from 5.30 a.m. till 9.30 a.m. And then again in the afternoon from 4.30 till 6.30. Um, we will hold classes of only 12 or fewer and have only two staff members. So we don't anticipate any interference with the other businesses in the facility with us. Um, we're very excited about the possible opening of our studio. Um, we're both community members here in Celine, so we see a lot of potential in the community and we're to be actually, let's uh, hold off until the subsequent, actually, the next motion will be a motion to close the public hearing and then a motion to acknowledge receipt and to approve or not approve. Um, when we get to that third motion, if anyone has any questions or concerns, I'll bring you back up to the podium. Okay? Thank you, Thank you for your comments this evening. Are there additional um, citizen comments? Move to close. Been moved Second. by Council Member Gearbaugh to close the public hearing at uh, 7 56 p.m. Was that a second by Councilman Seal? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of closing the public hearing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. <laughs> public hearing is now closed. The third motion will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the June 15, 2017 memo from Celine Planning Commission and to approve or not to approve the special land use for delirium fitness at 207 and 209 Industrial Drive. Move to acknowledge and approve. Then Second. moved by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar to acknowledge and to approve and seconded by Council Member CEO. Is that correct, sir? Yes, sir. All right, excellent. Um, any discussion or questions for staff or for the applicant? Mr. CEO. This is in the space that's presently occupied by Illuminus Studios? No, we're actually going to be next door to them. It used to be um, Champion um, Driving School. Oh. So you're just south of them? Um, we're just north of Illumis. We're in the space north of them. Okay. Additional questions, sir? Who's your partner? Um, Laura Baldwin. Okay. Thank you. Why don't you hang tight? Uh, additional questions for the applicant? Okay. I guess there are none. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, subsequent discussion. Mr. Gearbaugh. Uh, Planning Commission was a unanimous support of this. Um, of course, it is another fitness business, but hey, everyone's into fitness now, and I think it's a good support. Um, the fact that it's a special use in their industrial park, we know that those buildings are in, being repurposed for other th reasons, and so this makes sense to expand into other businesses. So this is a good idea. Thank you, Council Member. Mr. CEO? I, uh, too, am in support of it because uh, a number of those buildings have already been used in that manner. I don't know if a number have, but Certainly that same building, a portion of it has. This Illuminous studio that I questioned her about a few moments ago has, uh, I think, um, yoga class, or has had yoga classes in there. And I think in the past, some kind of a dance fitness arrangement, I don't know, with Zumba or yeah, jazzercise, okay. So I think it, it fits right in with the other uses there in the same building. Very good, thank you, sir. Mr. Hard, did you have a question or comment? Well, I was going to comment, uh, as Mr. CEO did, um, it seems like a good fit with the other businesses in the building. Good. <clears throat> Thank you, ma'am. Anything else? Then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Mayor Pro Tem Tahar, seconded by Council Member CEO to acknowledge receipt and to approve. <coughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you for your time this evening. We appreciate your comments. We move on to new business item 17-112. This is posted machine lease with Pitney Bowes. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the memo dated uh, June 28, 2017 from Clerk Royal and to approve or not to approve the 60-month lease with Pitney Bowes for the City of Saline postage machine and to authorize or not authorize the City Manager to execute the lease agreement after review and approval by the City Attorney. Move to acknowledge, approve, and to authorize. Thank you, Councilmember Gearbaugh. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Dillon. Uh, Clerk Royal, do you care to make any comment at this time? Uh, no, this is just a renewal of a five-year agreement that we current we had, and it will actually be less than our current lease, so it's a win-win. Good. Questions for the city clerk? Any discussion? 
They will proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Gearboss, seconded by Dillon to acknowledge receipt, to approve, and to authorize. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. I say have it, and the motion carries unanimously. We move on to the last new business item of the evening, which is 17-113. This is Leather Bucket Alley Lease. This will be a motion to acknowledge receipt of the memo dated June 28, 2017 from City Superintendent Engineer Rubel and to approve or not to approve the encroachment lease agreement for exterior stairway at 103 to 105 West Michigan Ave in Leather Bucket Alley. I move to acknowledge receipt. Should be license lease. Second. Did I say? Lease. I said lease. And, it, and it's actually read, it's actually spelled out as license. Okay, very good. Nice so, Thank you. Sir. I want to make that clear, folks. I accidentally read lease, and it is um, enumerated as license. So just to be clear on that, that was my mistake. Mr. Gearball, you made the motion to acknowledge receipt, um, and was it Councilwoman Mitchell who seconded that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, and Mr. Rubel, or Mr. Rubel is absent this evening, so Mr. Fordyce and Mr. Campbell are taking the lead on this issue. Um, Director Fordyce, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, you have. Uh, Gary's memo before you that lists uh, multiple steps that w uh, staff went through in preparing this agreement. Um, some of the details, including the, you know, there's a number of underground utilities in that alleyway, so DBW was out there marking those and figuring out where the water service for this building comes in, looking for potential conflicts with uh, the foundation system for the stairway. The stairway was subsequently revised a couple of times to uh, reduce. Uh, the number of contact points with the ground um, and indeed the uh, the rendering that uh, was distributed tonight that is yet again out of date there are fewer uh, support columns than this image shows um, so the the visual bulk of this staircase has uh, substantially decreased from uh, I think the representation that you saw at the first meeting when this was discussed so um, everything's moving in the right direction the, um, the building owner and contractor have met with uh, adjacent businesses. They met with Main Street, um, the, the design team to review the staircase. Uh, again, in your, in your packet, you have uh, information from those folks. Um, and it seems unanimously that uh, everyone's in support of this, um, uh, agreeing with the, uh, the layout of the staircase, um, minimizing the aesthetic impacts uh, with the recommendation of painting it black um, and as Mrs. Hess noted in the public comments there used to be a stairway here so in some way we're going back kind of a historic restoration um, uh, one of our attorneys uh, Nicholas Curcio developed the draft license agreement that uh, puts forth the uh, necessary terms I do want to note two um, edits in there that, that we need to make um, Section 5, the hold harmless indemnification section. Which page? Uh, two of the agreement, of the license agreement. Page two of the license agreement, continue. Section 5. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. The third line down there, uh, it says awards or other losses arising from the he designs. We need to eliminate the word he. And then. Hey, wait, real quick, Mr. Ford. Is everyone clear on that? No. Repeat where it's at. It's on page two, page section, two. Five. section five. Hold harmless indemnification. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I think that will be you. that will be struck without objection. Continue, Mr. Fortis. And then in section nine, uh, subsection B, it says the city manager of the city may suspend or revoke this license immediately without notice if he or she reasonably. And we need to insert the word believes after reasonably. Everyone clear about that one? Mm -hmm. That change will also be made without objection. <coughs> and um, if uh, council has any um, other questions about the project, there are uh, several project representatives here today. Uh, Mr. Dunn, the owner of the property, uh, Mr. Heiser with Phoenix Contractors, and Mr. Tolliver the uh, owner of the restaurant. Thank you, Mr. Fortis. Gentlemen, we welcome you here this evening. Um, before I open it up for questions, does uh, do any of the three of you care to make a comment at this time? Mr. Dunn, please, the floor is yours. I just wanted to thank everybody for considering uh, this uh, uh, request. I, I think it's imp really important for the integrity of the building um, uh, for us to be able to put the, the, the caliber 
apartments we want to put on the second and third floor uh, in there, which I think is, is real good for the downtown. So we appreciate your, your review and support. Excellent. Appreciate you being so thorough and working with us to expedite this matter. Yep, no problem. Uh, why don't you hang tight, though, uh, in the event that there are questions that uh, that would be more appropriate for you to address. What questions uh, are there from the dais? Mr. Gearbaugh, do you want to begin as the uh, mover of the motion? Um, just kind of real quick. Um, having seen this happen in where we had stairwells and other locations and buildings I've managed or whatever, in terms of visually impaired, is there a concern with ADA compliance that potentially somebody wandering through that alley, do we need to have some kind of better barricade because it's an open type stairwell uh, there will be a gate so an, an exit only gate uh, so to even enter that staircase I'm kind of referring more to where the, the posts and everything are. Oh, oh yeah so again, most of those posts have been eliminated um, and yeah, that maybe that's a clarification yeah, I just need to understand. yeah and that last so that last lowest landing there there aren't that to the as you're looking at it on the left or the Benito side, um, that post is not there. So these two posts are just one of them. There's six posts right now. So. Yep. Yeah. There, what's going to happen? There's going to be two in the center of um, the, the double stair. There's going to be two posts, and they're going to come up, uh, and they'll be off for support. Oh. Okay. So there's only going to be two posts that come down. And they'll be more yeah. close to the building. Then? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's that was the initial blush the architect okay. put together. So it's really outdated at this point. You know, that's fine. That was one of my concerns, just that I know people walking through this because that's their intent, and just to make sure that right. we're okay for pedestrian yeah. and access. And there's yeah. um, seven feet of clearance under that landing, so we should yeah, be Yeah, I just here. don't want anybody to walk into a post and right. have that kind of concern. Wild texting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that could happen, too. Never thought of that. Um, that's my question. You're Thank good, you. Mr. Gearbaugh. Uh, was it Ms. Dillon? Please. Um, going back to the agreement, Mr. Fordyce, number five, the hold harmless one, mm -hmm. there's actually two number fives. That should actually be a number four. Ooh. That was a great catch. Yep. Thank you for that, Ms. Uh, Ms. Dillon. That correction will also be made without objection. So there, again, there are two number fives. The first needs to be changed to four. And then I think you answered my questions about which polls are being eliminated. And you just hit upon my third question, which was the safety issue. So there's going to now be a gate at the bottom of the stairwell. Yep. So people can't just, is it a key? Is it a fob? Um, is it something like that? Or is it just a swing door? Uh, right now, we're, we're, it's, it's, there's going to be a, a gate there, and it's going to have to be designed. We're not sure it'll be a swipe card or, right. or you know, a, a number com for the people to, uh, if, you know, when they use it. Uh, it's really designed, of course, for the, the apartment uh, folks, but it will not. We have to design it so they can't reach around and, you know, push open the, the gate. Right. So, uh, but yeah, that just it just it's, that needs to be designed as far as That's how we're going to do that. Well, thank you very much because that was one of my initial concerns: was people just wandering up the stairs and falling off the edge or yep. falling things from yeah, the that, top down. I, I think I think Mr. Seal brought that up last time that we of having some form of gate. I, that's so, a good idea. Okay. So. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Additional questions for other staff or the applicant? Councilwoman Mitchell. Um, I just have a quick comment for staff. Um, my expectation is is that when we have an updated drawing that we can see it because it was confusing and I, I think it took up a little bit of time. Um, and for the applicants, I'm very excited about this project. Um, and I was really grateful that you reached out to neighboring business owners. I did that too. I kind of walked the, the sidewalks um, between our last meeting and talked, and it was unanimous that people were really in support of this. So thanks for going for that extra mile. Thank you, Councilwoman. Any additional questions or comments? Ms. Tahar. Yeah, I just wanted to comment uh, to say I really appreciated the fact that you listened to every, it, it, as, as I recall, every single comment and question uh, Council had at the last discussion of this and, and dealt with them. So, um, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Mr. Fordyce, thank you. Yep. Appreciate your time this evening. We're excited to move forward on this. Of course, it'll be more exciting when you uh, inaugurate the apartments yes. and when uh, our new barbecue joint opens up. But uh, keep
keep up the good work and let us know what else we can do to, uh, to be helpful. Great, we will do. Thank you very much. We have a motion on the floor to acknowledge receipt of the memo dated June 28th from Superintendent Engineer Rubel. If there's no additional discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. How about a subsequent motion now to approve or not to approve the encroachment lease agreement for exterior stairway at 103 to 105 West Michigan Avenue in the Leather Bucket Alley? Move to approve. Moved by Mitchell to approve, and I believe that was seconded by Dylan. Um, any discussion? Mr. Seal. Again, to correct you, sir, the encroachment license. Did I say lease again? You did. It's a verbal tick. <laughs> My mistake. Thank you for noting that. Additional comments? No, then we'll proceed to vote. It's been properly moved by Mitchell, seconded by Dylan to approve. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Happy 4th. We move on to the discussion portion of our agenda. First up is Commission, Committee, and Task Force reports from Council members. Are there any? Ms. Dillon. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that the Drug Task Force has recently received two grants, um, very generous grants from St. James Church and from St. Joe Mercy Health Systems. So we are planning some events and some programming using those funds, and so we're looking forward to that. And also the Cable Commission recently met, and I just wanted to remind people that are Comcast customers that they can watch city council meetings, other city meetings, and city events on channel 18 of Comcast. If you're not a Comcast subscriber, you can go to vimeo.com and upload the videos from there. And a lot of times they're also on social media, Facebook, the city's social media accounts through the city, um, and other sources. Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Additional commission committee or task force reports. Mr. Gearbaugh. Um, real quick, Planning Commission approved the final site plan for Zippy Car Wash, so we're hoping that'll get under place, or get take, will start being built pretty quickly. And, oh, see another item. No, that wasn't on the agenda. I can't remember right now, sorry. But the big the one was Zippy's Car Wash. The depot. The depot. What was that? The depot. No, I think he was referring to there was another item on the Planning Commission agenda um, that we discussed, and I can't remember it what it, it is now. It though. wasn't a large item, so at this point, um, we're good. Addition, com additional committee, co uh, commissioner task force reports? Uh, let's transition then to reports and other announcements. Mr. Gearball, you wanted to discuss liquor licenses? Yeah, I just was, um, you know, we had talked about the, um, the new, uh, I don't know what they're going to call it, the tap room or whatever down at... That Mr. Tapp's the place that they're going to be opening next to Imagine Theater, and we were curious as how he was going to get a liquor license. And I didn't know if if this one's a, the one memo talks about the license for um, four, two bars at 405 East Michigan Avenue. Is this just a transfer of the license between Majam? Or I'm not sure what this one was for. That's it. It says, Manjama, it says um, basics, it got, uh, it's adding shares of someone, but it says the applicant license ECI Incorporated, a Kentucky corporation, business address and phone number 405 East Michigan Avenue, Saline, Michigan. And I just wasn't sure. It's a transfer of the license. I just didn't understand what business was. Well, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be Monjamos because Monjamos yeah. was located at 103 to 105 yeah, West Michigan Avenue. So, just curious, I didn't know what this one was. Clerk Royal, can you take a look at that and uh, <coughs> send out uh, some I'm additional not. information to Council? Excellent. One of the other reasons why I'm asking this is because we know there's changes happening at the state in terms of what, what comes to us and what doesn't. And unfortunately for us, we're seeing these as a notification. The other one just happens to be, the uh, which we're looking forward to, is the tasting room at the new cheese shop that will be opening. So, um, I think that was pretty straightforward. <coughs> and actually, um, I, I should note, as it relates to the Sleen Cheese Shop, that uh, my office, as well as um, Representative State Representative Donna Lazinski, are working with John Loomis, the proprietor of the Cheese Shop, to expedite the review of his application and get it approved. Yeah, because I remember we used to have these come through us, and now that they not necessarily have to come through us as a approval process, it's just interesting to see this happen. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gearbaugh. Other reports or announcements? Well, I have two. Um, one I referenced earlier at the beginning of tonight's meeting. Um, in front of you, you do have a revised performance evaluation um, form for our city manager. We will be conducting his evaluation at our next council meeting on July the 17th. 
I want to acknowledge and thank everyone who played a part in, um, in crafting this new uh, rubric. Um, and it's highlighted on the, the cover page that our expectation is that these are returned to um, Al Getzman in the city manager's office no later than 5 p.m. next Tuesday the 11th um, so that she can compile them in an Excel spreadsheet that would go out with our council packets a week from this Thursday. Um, the forms that you turn in will be made part of um, the official file and then my, uh, my other expectation is she'll make a copy of the form that you turn in put it back in your mailbox so you'll receive it with your council packet in the event that you want to reference it during the city manager's evaluation. Okay. Everyone clear on that? Could we have this electronically too? Absolutely. Would you Thank take you. care of that, Clerk Royal? Yep. Very good. Um, other reports or announcements? Well, actually I have one and I ran this by the city manager uh, earlier today and, and I'll preface by saying it takes a lot to, uh, to get under my skin, but uh, I am absolutely appalled to, um, to learn from several residents that um, flower arrangements and pots have been stolen off of grave sites at Oakwood Cemetery. And I have to tell you, I think that's about the lowest thing um, that somebody could do. And so I know that the city manager has um, expressed my concern to Police Chief Rennick. Uh, my, my understanding, Chief, is that you were already made aware of those concerns um, and that um, the police department is stepping up its presence and visibility in, uh, in Oakwood Cemetery. Uh, but my message to anybody who has done that or who would even consider doing it is uh, if you're caught, you, you will be punished. Um, and it is incredibly disrespectful. Um, and you know, based on the reports and phone calls uh, and inquiries I received, there's absolutely no doubt that people are taking pots. It's not the DPW um, removing um, you know, dead or decaying plants, uh, it, quite the opposite. So uh, again, I wanna bring that to everyone's attention and to note that uh, the police are going to um, step up um, or increase the, the uh, visibility in, in Oakwood Cemetery and for good reason. So. Again, took no pleasure in having to say that, but felt that I had to. Um, are there additional reports or announcements? Uh, then we'll move on to the last one, which is the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, Mr. Skull. Um, we are progressing with the odor study. We've had about, well, about 12 complaints this week. Six of them came in from Tetra Tech, four were from the same person. We had a couple others call in. Um, we are uh, in the middle of uh, disassembling the old scrubber to see if we can get the new media in. Maybe we can nurse it through in a kind of ad hoc process. We also have UI, uh, USP technology coming in Thursday. They're a company that specializes in odor abatement chemicals. It wouldn't be an economical way to treat it forward, but in the peak times, we could we may have an additive that we can add. They were in in the springtime, but the levels were too low for them to try to sell us anything. So hopefully, we'll make some progress on that. Thank you. Appreciate the update. Any questions for Mr. Skull? Ms. Mitchell. Um, Mr. Skull, when you say that this company is coming in, USP. Are they, is it masking? Is it preventative or what? It would be preventative. Talk? It'll oxidize okay. the sulfate compounds. Oh, okay. All right. Additional questions? Mr. Skull? Bob, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. uh, we move on now to the second public comment period under the Open Meetings Act. Any citizen may come forward at this time, make comment or question to City Council. This public comment period will be limited to three minutes per person. Anyone who would like to speak is requested but not required mm -hmm. to state his or her name and address for the record. Mary Hess, on on uh, work meeting, they're talking about a 425 agreement, and what I'm wondering is the Phillips property, when the city bought that property, we also got in an agreement with Pittsfield Township, uh, on the other side of uh, the, in, well, I forget the road that goes through there, but anyway, I think. That property after 45 years is to go back to Pittsfield. And I was wondering, a couple of people asked me about it, and I would like uh, to, I can't quite recall, but I think that that was to return. And that was probably about 30 years ago. Uh, and I was wondering if, if that's true or not, because we will lose a big uh, tax when when it gets changed over and those are one of the problems with 425s 
Thank you, Mrs. Hess. Are there are additional citizen comments. Well, I would note we will uh, we will certainly be discussing um, all of the implications, both beneficial and potential ramifications with 425 agreements. You are correct to an extent, Mrs. Hess, that there are um, a few parcels in the city of Saline that were annexed via uh, 425s. Um, they came into the city for a 50 year time period um, and there's the ability to renew the lease for an additional 50 years. Um, I would also note, uh, and I think you made reference to this during your first comment this evening, that uh, I did not discuss sidewalks in my mid-year state of the city address. Sidewalks were mentioned, I believe, in the third or the second paragraph on the third page. But I would also ask Mr. Fordyce, since you're taking the lead on our sidewalk rehabilitation pro program, perhaps you could update us at our next meeting or one of our next meetings on how that is progressing. Sure. Okay. Be oh, excellent. Even better. Thank you. Um, and I would note uh, upcoming meetings. Um, we have work meetings actually um, on the 17th and then at both of our meetings in August. Um, it, our next one uh, on the 17th will begin at 6 p.m. Again, we'll be discussing annexation and then briefly our electronics policy um, on the 7th. Uh, as a follow-up to the discussion um, and debate that you had at your last at our last council meeting, we'll be discussing employee contracts, and we'll be looking at that issue in its totality. So, employee contracts, evaluations, uh, severance pay, etc. Uh, and what I would ask, um, because I hope to have a really focused discussion, is if you do have questions or um, you request you have a request for any information relating to any or all of those issues that you get in touch with the city manager as soon as possible. Uh, I already asked to um, receive between four and six examples of, of how other municipalities handle these issues. So severance pay, the appointment of, of officers, their annual evaluations, et cetera. But again, I would encourage you to, to get those inquiries in um, as soon as possible. And then at our second meeting in August, we will be discussing downtown parking, which is uh, you know an item that I focused in on in my State of the City address uh, with some downtown property owners as well as Selene Main Street. Um, so if there's nothing further, uh, we've already excused the absence of Councilwoman uh, McClellan. The chair would entertain a motion now to adjourn at uh, 8.23 p.m. So moved. Moved by Gearboss, seconded by Dillon. All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. This meeting is adjourned.